Hi, how's it? <coughs> yes, again. I'm flimmy, whatever. Uh, in the name of Christ, I hope you're good. It's Crank K. My skin just will not stop breaking out, and I'm like, I, I just, at this point, I don't care. All right, uh, acne in comparison to the sorrow of my soul. Absolutely shoddy to focus on, so we're not doing that. Uh, recording on two devices, yeah, and the side where acne is just like really wreaking havoc in my life is on the iPhone over there. So, yeah, just to basically hope that not hope have like a backup whatever enough with the intros caveat i'm wearing like app makeup it's like all up in your grizzide over there that's what you're looking at just to make myself look a little bit better and feel better therefore but frankly i wake up like this so, but anyway yeah let's just try and put that caveat out there Alrighty, look guys um life is rough you know i never know what to talk about every day until i like just get into it except this time around i do know Maybe I don't know. Let's just get into this conversation. No, I shall not make it a habit to upload two chat sessions and workouts. I was just going through a very hard knock season, so I sort of kind of broke out into an extra video. We're not going to keep that up because my schedule is already jam-packed, and frankly, I'm not trying to add to it. So don't get excited over there. Uh, what's good? What's up? So this morning, I woke up to hear from the Lord God Almighty. Again, 1,000 may fall on your side, 10,000 on your right, but it will not come near you. I was like, thanks for confirming that. I really did need to hear that, because it turns out that apparently a 1,000 are falling on my side. Have you fallen just yet? Anyway. And then I also heard, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape the things which are coming on the earth. So the Lord is just confirming that we're going home. But I did also say, <clears throat> oh, throat. I did also say that in the run-up to going home, things are going to ramp up in increasing insanity, and I will also be given some kind of reprieve, and that's exactly what's going to be going down, up and sideways. Listen up, you guys, alrighty. Um, I don't... Do I really have to keep talking? Yeah, I guess I, I do. Um, yeah, let me keep talking. Wearing same vest as yesterday, like, really, who cares? It's the end of days, and the apocalypse is nigh, so... Really, who has time to be changing out into a new skipper? We're not doing it. Listen, you guys. Um, as the, oh, Okay. So y'all know that I am presently, like, seeking to self-defend myself by knocking down a domino in America that nobody uh, will do me a favor by just neutralizing already just like day before yesterday uh, i will not however be alone in knocking this domino down i will be helped by south african witches i did not ask for their help they're just going to feel an imperative to do so the reason they're going to feel an imperative to do so is because they're going to be mad at america secondly they're also going to be mad at the embarrassment that i am and america is going to be making it worse because i'm on their shores i'm chilling on their doorsteps and I look like their victim, and so in order to minimize the sorrow against my life, they're going to kill the American. Using death curses, so frankly, witches, they, they think that they are God. They proper think they're God, they think they can take matters into their own hands, so vigilantes are going to kill this American man. And uh, I'm also going to be responsible for bringing him low, because at the season when these witches are going to be sending him a whole bunch of death curses, I'm going to be telling him where to get off, and it's just all going to culminate in a whole bunch of sorrow, then he's going to be knocked out. America, on that day, we will then have one. I will have one. South Africa has not won. I am a remnant that is going to be getting snatched out of this ridiculous nation. Um, so when that little bugaboo gets knocked out of the way, I'm the winner, not South Africa. Their witchcraft is an abomination. They will pay for his murder. I, however, will rejoice for conquering it because it is no longer a him. That's what's happening. So the American guy has to move out the way. He has to get out. And the Lord is going to, um, what is this, a, a charge all of these wicked Satanists against him. It's written in God's word that um, the heart of a king is like a string, spring stream. Literally, all those could could be the truth. Of, of water. It's like a stream of... It could be a spring or a stream. Or a, you know, string. Like, it could be. Anyway, but it's rather stream of water. the uh, In the hands of the Lord. Okay, the heart of a king is like a stream of water in the hands of the Lord. And he charges it or charts its course in whichever direction he will have it go. Uh, the same can therefore apply to just about every human being. It's written in God's word that man plans and then God laughs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so human beings are under the sovereignty of the Lord God Almighty. It is also written in God's word that the Lord has set apart everything for its purposes, including the... I'm going to burp. Uh. There we go. Release some air. Um, yeah, no, we get to do that. Uh, yeah. 
the Lord has set apart everything for its purposes, including the wicked for the day of trouble. Okay, so wicked men and women are sometimes charged to basically on behalf of the beleaguered church, which let's just throw this one out there, Matthew 7. The road is narrow that leads to life and few there be that find it. We're few, right? And so we tend to just kind of be like violently outnumbered and stuff by a population of earth citizens that just don't make sense at all. And because we're outnumbered, the Lord sometimes just grabs these minions all over the show, these grasshoppers, and makes them bash their heads into each other, butt heads. Makes them crash into one another like the waves at sea and destroy one another. It's written in God's word that the wicked are like the tossing sea whose waters bring up mire and dirt continually. So you can trust, a t trust that they bring one another up um, as the mire and dirt that they are continually. So they love to go to war with each other. Uh, but they also love to go to war with the body of Christ. But sometimes how the Lord rescues or reprieves the lovely body of his body is is by making them butt heads in the cosmos or maybe even physically just kind of neutralize each other. Um, on our outnumbered behalf, because that's literally what we always are and have been in, like, forever. Only check out the Hebrews and the, like, you know, not wilderness. Well, could be, but what I wanted to say is, like, when they were about to go inside the land flowing with milk and honey, the armies of those lands were far greater than them. I mean, one time, uh, Joshua, uh, you know, they, the, 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 the kids went to go and check out what's going on, and they came back and they were like, oh, there's giants. Guys, there's giants. And their voices were trembling like a harmonica. Uh, but nonetheless, they conquered a city that had little Goliaths just roaming around, hopping up and down like a kangaroo. So God knows how to rescue his people. Um, and so therefore, like, there's like nothing at all to fear. They've always been outnumbered. And sometimes the people in the camp of the enemies of God are giants like Goliath. Like YouTube is like a Goliath. What are you doing? Anyway, whatever. So, I mean, when you're dealing with people like those, you got to cause some people to butt heads with each other. For the sake of the righteous, you know what I'm saying? We are going to be outnumbered, but we have God on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So sometimes God sends wishes into armies, into battles, sorry, as these fruitless armies, as the wicked for the day of trouble. He has set them apart sometimes to rescue the righteous by just butting heads against each other. So South African witches are going into battle with this man in America, and not just this man in America, but just like a whole bunch of, oh, a silly agenda in America. And they are going to help me out. However, not be in my camp. I'm like the Hebrews. I don't belong to the Amalekites, but they're going to butt heads with the Amorites or whatever. They're just going to, you know, Jebusites and Amorites or bull skulls cracking into each other till the army that I'm fighting is only made up of five people and really it's nothing it's fine I, I got this I can I can slay five dudes but I definitely cannot come up against 500,000 what are you doing yeah so the law says that we bring down 1,000 and two of us bring down 10,000 however what if there's like a hundred thousand those hundred thousand gonna go to war with each other they're gonna fight one another they're gonna neutralize each other so, Afrique du Sud is about to basically respond to America's incendiary agenda against them uh, by just doing an Afrique du Sud thing, typicality. And America's going to do an American typicality, and this is going to be them just kind of, you know, battling it out while I'm sitting here eating popcorn, waiting for them to be such a small number that now all I get to do is be like, <sighs> and then he's down. So the American is about to get lambasted by some South Africans. He's going to get cursed by death curses in their numbers. And largely is going to be men that are like, I'm sorry, she's mine. She's ours. She belongs to us. She's of to Muntue to Nam Sanje. I'm a pretty girl. And so for those reasons, like, frankly, he's going to die. And I then am just going to be the last one to be like, Phew. and then I will have my ice cream. I spoke about that yesterday. The American man is dying. And the reason why I'm pretty certain that he's dying is because I keep getting nightmares about him, like, going back to the drawing board. Because, like Mariah Carey, he properly thinks, we belong together. I'm about to explain some things over here, okay? There is a battle in the scriptures happening in the Old Testament. I don't know where exactly, where my particular hypothesis was proven true. And... It's written in Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun, and so therefore whatever it is that we've seen, like proper, we've already seen it. 
it's just gonna keep happening so how the lord uh, like handles the enemies of his camp uh, you know he tends to kind of repeat the same strategies because if it ain't broke don't fix it and there was a battle in the old testament where the people of god are going to go and grab the land flowing with milk and honey and then he makes the army the military uh, of the opposite country just kind of kill each other he makes them battle on behalf of, like literally on behalf of israel the hebrews are told to stand down chill the battle is the lord's and then they butt heads like in the dark and then they neutralize one another and the hebrews then celebrate because oh we didn't even have to shed a single tear we did not have to lose a single hair and we did not have to drop a single drop of blood so yes let's go and grab the land the lord says that his righteous are going to go and live on lands that frankly they did not work on they did not plant those vineyards but they're going to be eating those grapes so, so i'm about to eat some grapes but not before there's like a little cosmic battle <sighs> between fallen south africans and fallen americans and i will be the one to incite such a war as this because it's gonna happen okay i'm about to get my relief but in the run-up too it's gonna be really hard so since it's gonna be really hard i just have to keep talking about it so i can feel better okay listen up you guys the incendiary buffoon in america that thinks i'm the love of his life i am his friend well it's like so over but he's like all naive He's going to irritate South Africans and I'm going to make sure that he's going to keep irritating them by talking about him. Every day I walk up here and I speak out against this guy. There's going to be a witch or two gnashing his teeth and he's going to literally strike this dude with death, death curse number one and then two or three. All I got to do is rock up here and keep giving the gospel and then those on the broad road that leads to destruction that many enter into will do a typical thing. Even though this has been prophesied against them to do it, they will nonetheless not avoid it. You know how prophecy often gets fulfilled by people trying to avoid prophecy from being fulfilled and in so doing such a thing as that fulfill prophecy? So yeah, they might want to imagine that this is not going to happen, but it's going to happen because, like, in just indefinitely, in June, it's what they do. The wicked swing on a tree like Sia because they think it's a chandelier. It's a chandelier. They gonna fly like a bird in the sky with no regard for rules. They gonna swing like a chandelier on a chandelier. And while they're swinging like an orangutan, orangutan, a ooh, uh, on a tree, Karab is going to be getting delivered because the Lord would have set apart the wicked for the day of trouble. Booyah! It's a slam dunk for the kingdom of heaven. The lady Chica didn't have to raise a sword. All she had to do was watch the wicked fight. <laughs> okay, guys. So let's just get into this conversation. America, America, I've been telling you, some stuff gonna fall apart in your land. I mean, properly speaking, like, what are you doing? YouTube, you're Goliath, but remember, I get to take your head. <laughs> I'm not scared of you anymore, you're nobody now. But you're a nobody that's gonna give me what's mine. That's what's good. You're the wicked set apart for my trouble. You are among the big fat things in a land that I am supposed to seize. That are walking around and like the people are scared and God is like, hey, 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 hey. I told you the battle is mine. What's with your shaky knees? Oh, you of little faith. So I'm now here because God gave me scriptures in the night while I was sleeping. And I'm like, oh, I had little faith. But then the Lord told me a thousand will fall on my left and ten thousand on my right. Oh, it's not going to come near me. Mm. So because I know it's not going to come near me, I'm out here in these streets rather being like, I am the one swinging in the heavenlies, in the heavenlies. Because I'm seated there with the man Christ Jesus. So booyah. All the bears coming up against the sister. I am outnumbered, but like that's never really been an issue for Christians. I'm just saying. Or well, even the Hebrews, like, why ain't? If God wants you to inherit a land, you go and inherit a land. So South Africa, don't feel proud when, when suddenly this guy in America falls apart because you were just like a Judas. You had to betray Jesus. You know what I'm saying? You were just like somebody set apart to do a thing in order to bring about the glory of God ultimately in a people, but you're lost. You're like the Pharaoh. 
of Joseph, except without the swagger. That's what's good. Mm. Staying pagan, still going to hell, but nonetheless bringing forward the fulfillment of the prophecy that heals a hurting child of God. So I appreciate you confirming prophecy by sitting back where you're sitting until you get so annoyed by how bad you look because of what some American man is doing to your witchcraft that you're going to try and kill him. This is why South Africans are going to charge this American buffoon. I'm an embarrassment, okay? They did not want their witchcraft to look so obviously great, disgraceful. They don't want to look like they have abandoned me to a point of oblivion because I am so incredibly talented. And because it is so clear that, oh, Lana, all fans, this rubbish, this poor woman, this innocent. Um, those who are my enemies are going to be shaking in their pantyhose on some. It can't be this obvious, guys. I mean, that is the whole point of witchcraft. It's a clandestine affair. Uh, uh. I do get to burp. It's a clandestine affair, so we can't have a look like we don't bewitch a sister. And this dude in America is, oh, he's messing with our ebb and our flow. Oh, this guy in America, he's messing with what under heaven it is that we are trying to look like. We just go and we grab random strangers on the street and we bewitch them. And then it looks as if though life happens, you know, you want some, you lose some. Some people go through hard times and then they get out of them. Yeah, they try to make their witchcraft look like it's a hard knock life sometimes for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. But sometimes we rise. So they make their victims basically just kind of blend into the ecosystemic national crises all over the show of unemployment, national crises all over the show of gender-based violence. Just, you know, whatever the country's going through, I mean, it's a thing we have going down. So I guess, Garabo, you just so happen to be a statistics. Whoops. You just so happen to be a stat. Whoops. I'm sorry, no. We don't do stats, Archie, in these streets. We do fulfilled prophecy. <sighs> yeah, so um, uh, because I don't look like a stat, uh, but rather something that has been sabotaged, manipulated, uh, orchestrated to end up in this position. These South African witches be like, ay, 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 yo, this American guy, oh, hectic, he's heavy, he's extreme, he's too much, he's too much. This American guy's too much, guys, eh? because now it doesn't look natural, and this thing of yours look like witchcraft. Before he came along, Karabo was at least, you know, struggling, eh? but you know, it doesn't look as if so, it's life happened. Now he's here, yeah, it's looking creepy, it's looking eerie, it's looking like wanted to mention. And because it's looking like wanted to mention, we look like we bewitch our people until they can't breathe. Uh, uh, this is not us, we know it is that animal in America is making our witchcraft look really bad. It has to look natural, it has to look normal. Come on, otherwise, we're not gonna get away with murder. He's gonna die, he's gonna die, he's gonna die. So very typically and very predictably, South African witches are going to kill this guy so their witchcraft can run its course in a way that looks natural. Oh, you've been busted handing the cookie jar much. So they're about to go to war with the animal in America. Not just the animal in America, but whatever under heaven is the strategy that America is slicing and dicing Africa. I told you, my ministry uh, is being listened to by covens, witches, people involved in the darkness, just, you know, dabblings. Just adore it. Uh, my space is, is a haunted mansion. I've been saying it where in the individual rooms of the mansion, there are trapped witches. I draw witches. I'm like wool. And they're like black jacks and I'm walking through a wood, uh, through some woods. When I get out, they're all over my jersey. You know what I'm saying? So I can't help but catch them because it's what I'm supposed to do. So because they listen to me and then act like ain't none going on, my, my, literally, uh, my audience are a whole bunch of devil worshippers. I would diabolos. Mm. Oh, they're going to get frustrated and angry and go to war with like witches in America. Mm. And one of them is going to be this random buffoon. So every time I say, because that's just the thing about the hypocrisy of witches. So they be out here living in like Trinidad and Tobago or whatever. Or in Haiti or in, I don't know, like Congo. They be living in South Africa. And they have like the brazen audacity since they were born in South Africa and stuff. Citizenship and all. To be patriotic for their country. <laughs> They are doing these reads all patriotic for their countries, dumbos. Nya king. Like, they destroy their countries, but they're patriots. Like, where you gonna live? Where you gonna stay? Where you gonna, like, proper? Where are you going to hang your shirt? If at all, you don't have a country anymore. So, because they listen to me, like the little monsters in my cabin in the woods, every day just kind of crawling up my wall, manifesting demons, making, like, Emily Rose, like, literally crawling on the ceiling. 
like like a lizard. Uh, yeah, given that they're that, the moment I start to mention like American tactical strategies that are of a covert nature against Africa, against South Africa, they're like, how dare you come against my Congo? How dare you come against my America? Not my America, sword, but my Nigeria. How dare you come against my Ethiopia? How dare you come against my South Africa? Whoa, I'm sorry. You keep on bewitching the South African economy by bewitching your colleagues, and yet you have like a bone to pick with America for coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> hypocrisy is their flair hey they keep evaporating some hippocratic dust i don't know i think it's like mauve in color anyway so these randos evaporating hippocratic dust are patriots proper for their country they are like never you're gonna go insult me as an african i'll show you flames right now i will i will activate all the darkness around me just so you can sneeze it tomorrow see what's gonna happen ah. So what I'm doing is being seditious over here in the worst way. And I'm going to keep doing it. Why? Because I can't fight this on my own. The battle is the Lord's. And the Lord has given me a strategy to help them people understand what's going on out here in these streets. America becoming at you, pouncing like a beast. That's what's good. And these Africans going to be like, how dare you come at me, Congo? Yeah? How dare you afflict me, Nigeria? Mm. How dare you come at me in South Africa? I'm going to show you. Don't you go and mess with an African, eh? Well, you don't know what we do over here. Sitting over here with your Beyonce, eh? Glamorous witchcraft, I will show you a disgusting type. Eh? You will know tomorrow what's, what's going on. You will understand what time it is. You don't come against me. And since they believe everything I say, the reason why they believe everything I say is because I bust them. Not only do I bust them, the prophecies I speak give them goosebumps because they're accurate. And so for all those reasons, they know that I am not lying when I say America is literally strategizing against... <sighs> African content creators. So this like seditious lady over here literally sparking a war um, against America. I will not be alone because remember these witches are also patriots for their countries. Yeah? South Africans love South Africa. They love it when people say oh South Africa is such a beautiful country. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. I wanna know about you. Your country is lovely. They've got a satanic country but they love being told they're lovely as like the ugly girl that just cannot stop comparing herself to Beyonce that is South Africa Adia, in these streets and not just South Africa but pretty much all nations in the world their citizens tend to be patriotic and uh, that also includes witches therein they're strange little people those so they get annoyed they gnash their teeth they get agitated their brows start to shake they start to release like some extra sweat from parts of their bodies that never used to sweat before whenever I speak about how America is literally targeting content creators in Africa as a strategy against especially BRICS countries in order to weaken them through the weakest BRICS nations. I will continue to seditiously spur this up so that these witches in my little cabin in the woods that are a threat to my particular life will, before they handle me, handle you. So they're gonna come up against you in their covens. Do you understand? I have like a secret society. Let me tell you what's coming up against the sister room. Allow me to go and describe to you what's coming up against me, eh? So you can see just what a spiritual warrior I am and who it is that I'm fighting. Big people, who I'm not just dealing with amateur witches. They're like this silly little woman from South Africa with a once upon a time witchcraft where she does it in her kitchen using an onion. She's not in no, her. She's amateur. Eh? Even this American man doing it in his own private backyard. Oh, it's not in no. Amateur. I've got entire coven. Never mind coven. Never secret society. In that bin. They are focusing on me, monitoring spirits 24 hours a day. They send them to me, right? Eh? They've discovered me, and so they are monitoring me. They've been monitoring me for years. A secret society trying to handle not only the servants of God, but woman. Eh? So they're looking at me to go and check that traceability matrix to see if at all they are achieving what they want to achieve with my life. Eh? So, because they look at me, and they are a secret society bewitching all of South Africa, I'm telling you, eh? Please listen up, eh? If you've got itching ears, don't have them. Let them go and be scratched by a feather and then come back, eh? Secret society looking at me and other Christians like me because they look at us based on the power that we meet in the Holy Spirit. Eh? So if you are very powerful, they won't look at you. You might be some innocent lady that does nothing but knit crochet. But if you are very prayerful, they won't be looking at you. So they are afflicting both black, very, very heavy, fiery Christian in South Africa. And I'm one of them. Eh? I fast a lot, so I pray. I'm consecrated above reproach. So my prayer like fire. Oh. So they look at me. I'm one of them that don't go arrest in their little cave eh 
so these people know let me go and explain to you what happened yes let me tell you because they are looking at me they also go and money say everything i say crawling up my wall in my own side mention they are stuck in it but they think that i'm the one stuck in the air rather mansion yes so what's happening with these people eh? they look at me listen to everything i say and now that i have made it very clear then they also have discovered that i discovered them there's a time when i did a video where i was explaining what is the work of this secret society in case it end up on it started in Dabon. there are people that are scattered all over south africa and the different provinces here there's one in Gauteng. There's one in Northwest, there is one in Cape Town, there is one everywhere. Oh, eh, yo, but the one they are, if they, uh, they are affecting a strategy all over South Africa in order to go and decimate the female population, increase polygamy, and proliferate a male agenda because they are intimidated by the woman. They've got women working for them as well, they don't know, but they are also minion. That is what is happening. They have affected the Azulu strategy all over the country and they are monitoring it to see if it's working all right. It is responsible for the gender-based violence in the country because they have bewitched in a secret society of very powerful men in the country. Very powerful men in the country. I'm telling you some of them are in parliament. Eh? I'm telling you some of them go and run corporate South Africa. Eh? I'm telling you some of them are sitting over there or running in the entire community because they're the mayor. That is what is happening. They belong to this secret society and they are bewitching the whole country and then monitoring it. And the people coming up against them are the christians so they have monitored them and i just so happen to be one of them one of those fire ones it is a ball that keeps on sparking they are they are little uh, signed silly little clandestine meeting with a bomb blast so they they are very irritated with me but they think they've handled me so they listen to us or those of us that are disturbing to their peace they listen to us or and because i have discovered that they exist and even given them detail to a point of understanding that their headquarters are in dub and kzn they listen to me and they believe everything I say, oh. And remember what I said, oh. These witches, oh, don't be, like, you better believe me. They are patriotic, eh? They love their country. They're not trying to destroy their country. Where they gonna go and hang their shirt? Where they are gonna go and sleep at night, eh, if they go and destroy their own country? So they love their country. They are patriotic. But they are destructive as well. So they are destroy. I don't know what they are doing. They are self-neutralizing. But anyway... This is what the secret society is doing. And let me help you understand. They're doing this thing and they listen to us and they believe our prophecies if at all they've come to pass. So they take you seriously if you are very, very prophetic. And that's exactly what I am. Eh? So they listen to me. And when I talk about some silly little dumb boy in America trying to kill me, they get irritated but they don't care at all because whatever do you all. But at the same time, they want to look as if though, really, this is not in at all. Over here, this woman is just going through a hard time. Life, everybody goes through something. Eh? Every so often, you go through something. Eh? So it's just not seen. It's not seen, no. Let them go and ignore her. Let them ignore her. They got irritated. Why American men go and take a woman? But anyway, whatever. But now it's getting to a point where really and truly, Carabo, this stupid Christian woman that is the bane of our existence, that keeps on burning everything we do, our altars to the ground every second year. Oh, eh? Eh? Now she's claiming America's coming up against America, African Christian content creators. What is happening? Remember what I told you? Eh? These people are not just lay jeans and lay jaws reading, we're hanging around in your backyard. They're not amateur. They belong to a secret society running. Affairs in South Africa. Some of them are in the parliament. There are entire big people looking at the small little lady who has got nothing at all to write home about because she is turning 40 with absolutely no money. Yes, yes, yes. That is who I am. They they feel intimidated by me, but at the same time, they imagine that I'm non-threatening as well because I'm weak. Yes. But then when you come up against an entire country, when then you come up against their beloved South Africa, that's going to be when they're going to pick a bone with you. They're going to go and grab that bone and go to, to throw it out there and say, you know what, I don't want to do this. America, you don't get to come up against South Africa. I'm the only one that gets to destroy my own country. I am going to be the only hypocrite over here. I will be the only one that is duplicitous over here. I will destroy my own people. I will decimate my own women's. But you don't go and destroy my woman. You don't rock up here like the slave laborer. Eh? And don't go up African again. Do you think it's 1802? Do you believe it's 1798 over here? Oh, eh, ah, this is 2023. You don't get to go and make uh, Africans slave again. Oh. So what we going to do is take you away. Oh, we going to fight. We understand that you've got a whole coven with the Illuminati over there. But you've never ever fought against an African secret society. So allow me to explain to you, America, what's coming to you, eh? My secret society here over here in South Africa, they believe everything I say, oh, because I'm the bane of their existence, so plus all of my prophecy comes to pass. That is what is happening. So because I have explained to them that America is coming up against tactically bricks, and the first country that they're going to knock out out of the way is South Africa, because it is among the weakest BRICS nations. 
they are going to fight you they are not gonna go without a fight it's not an amateur that's going to be coming against you hey it is not going to be a small little witch living in a corner over there experimenting with an onion in their kitchen no it's going to be an entire whole entire secret society members of which run corporate south africa and even the entire nation through members of parliament and they are going to be like this woman has been accurate before so uh, if there is a strategy against south africa we've got to have to let's put a pause button let us press a pause button on what we're doing to her to shut her up and rather deal with the bigger threat to south africa so america i have just gone on right ahead and incited a war against you by a secret society spiritually in south africa since you are covert and clandestine in attacking content creators in africa they are gonna be covert and clandestine too they're not gonna declare tanks and a war on your shore they are going to go and send witchcraft to you that's what's happening and among the first people to get blown away is that idiot in america that is trying to take a woman that does not belong to him that is what is happening he's going to be collateral damage they're going to remove him out of the way they're going to decimate him but they're also going to counter attack your sorcery they're going to go and investigate if i'm onto something and upon discovering that i am correct they are then going to fight you so the south african satanist is going to come up against the american satanist and it's going to be a coven a big fat chunky coven they've got strong power high priests and priestesses against america they're gonna fight each other and when they are done everything will be bombed to the ground but i will be the only one surviving that's what's gonna happen hey, uh, uh, do you believe me you don't gotta believe me because these witches even in trying to prevent their own prophecies from coming to pass they do them anyway i am being watched by some pretty prolific satanists do you understand like belonging to secret societies and that is because a child of the living god is very super strong in the cosmos we do a very amazing alarming thing especially when we're super duper prayerful you are going to be scrutinized um and i've been under scrutiny for years by some pretty nefarious diabolical beings out here in these streets that are also strangely hypocritically patriotic so since america what you're doing to me is not just against uh said carabo but just generally against them they're gonna attack you with spirits too they're gonna come at you with spirits too and the first person to be knocked out is going to be this like filthy man that thinks you go to dope santing at you in the side of the street and he's gonna run with it they're gonna knock him out on my behalf following which they will then come up against everything else in america this is why you're not gonna be able to stand despite the fact that you're such a strong superpower you're already falling apart you are going sodom that is you america to fall with the very south africa you're trying to bring down and all the other smaller BRICS nations you're gonna fall with them if the lord has handed them over to a reprobate mind last night i was watching yet another american content creator a christian however uh tom hughes explaining what's going on in america and it was laughable but also quite sad and i could not help not just tom hughes but also the watchman i could not help but wag my head and be like when is this nonsense or when is this a rabiosh ever gonna come to a blistering end yeah everybody's tired everybody's exhausted yeah, this needs to stop yeah but like it's not gonna stop we're gonna go home we're frustrated by our country tom hughes relates with me why because he's living in the wrong country so too is the watchman and so too am i i was watching the watchman first and then tom hughes i will tell you what tom hughes did said but let me rather first speak about the watchman right all of us feel as if that we were born in the wrong countries because of our value sets i was born in south africa i belong to a country whose political ideology i have absolutely no respect for i do not like my country's allies i'm not a fan of russia i'm not a big fan of um china uh this whole BRICS alliance is just rubbish and south africa just keeps on adding insult to injuries they are anti-israel so they are pro-palestine they are running with everything so really and truly if the enemies of south africa declared war on us they would be declaring war ubiquitously on a country who has got a citizen in it that frankly is pro the the beleaguering country the nation that is declaring war on us i would rather be standing with their political ideologies and their i would basically i feel trapped in a country who does not represent my heart crime right that's the first thing the fact that they're pro-palestine the fact that they are anti-israel the fact that they stand with russia over the ukraine war the fact that they stand with um 
with China, which I'm not a big fan of because all the countries of the earth that frankly want absolutely nothing to do with Jesus. South Africa is just standing with him. I don't know how. Like a kingdom divided cannot stand. How under heaven you call yourself a Christian nation and then you stand with all of the nations that are the enemy of Jesus. All the nations that are the enemy of God. So I feel like I'm misplaced. So if a bomb were to basically land on my shores from, I don't know, America or somewhere else in Europe, the bomb would be landing from a country whose political ideologies I more stand aligned with. But I do have a bone to pick with America for a lot of reasons and so too with Europe because of all of their insanities um, that they have walked in, their, their flagrant immorality, the immorality of which has basically made them at the beck and call stooping at the level of nations that have no regard for God. Countries that don't regard human rights. Countries that are absolutely absent in their regard for what the, the people on the ground have to say. Controlling megalomaniacal nations that want their people run like puppets on a string and when the people complain they sometimes just die or disappear. Yeah, I belong to a country that stands with nations like those and yet it calls itself Christian. So frankly, I would be better off standing with American ideology if only it wasn't so sick and crazy and also much of what's going on in Europe. I'm in the wrong country in the worst way. Herein lies the news bulletin from the Watchmen. Okay, uh, apparently, allegedly, BRICS, right? I can already know how BRICS is expanding. That's what's good. So now they want to, uh, they have invited, they have literally sent out an invitation. Other countries are knocking on the door of BRICS to join it. But this particular nation, they knocked on its door, its door, to join it in order to go and weaken the US of A's currency. Mm. Creating yet more grander enmity, basically, with the body of Christ. Um by bricks bricks is is at enmity that whole alliance is at enmity with the body of christ it is an enmity the union is so anti-christ it is so incredibly unserving of christianity on the earth that no christian should ever be proud to belong to bricks so i was born in the deadbeat wrongest country under heaven ever that's that, that's what's good given that i would ultimately serve the lord with all of my heart it makes no sense therefore no it makes sense entirely therefore that i'm as persecuted as i am one of the most persecuting countries in the world of christians is iran and bricks went on right ahead and invited literally sent out uh, an enveloped letter to iran to join bricks iran's response of which was a congratulations to bricks for doing what they're doing because indeed they need to weaken the strength of the united states of america however they're yet to make a decision but the fact that iran has been invited to um join bricks i'm like yo guys can you find more countries blasphemous against the lord in one union right now can you can you and then America goes on right ahead to give concessions to Iran, remove sanctions for whatever reason, and now you're trying to even, like, you know, fund or uh, enable their nuclear deal. When this is like Gog and Magog all up in your grill literally being formulated in front of everybody's eyes. I belong to the wrong country. When I say I feel like I was born in Iran the way I'm so persecuted as a Christian, I properly mean I was born in Iran because my country persecutes Christians almost as much as Iran. So do you seriously think that you can make an alliance with a nation that so hates God that it kills Christians and then in and of yourself not kill Christians? Do you seriously think that you can mix your blood, South Africa, with that of like bloodthirsty nations? against believers and not in and of yourself end up bloodthirsty it is no wonder i am so persecuted you stand with china that is busy trying to rewrite the bible you stand with um russia which is busy taking other countries and other countries in this world without even batting an eyelid you stand with iran that has shed the blood of the saints you are like babylon bricks is like babylon in the worst way it is drunk with the blood of the saints of the living god and it is trying to rise up against the world superpower at the expense of the freedom that that world superpower has given to the world. But the world superpower is falling apart. Why? Because it is slowly but surely starting to become Sodom or really fast. Never mind slowly, but surely. It is a wicked nation that is going to definitely fall under its enemy. It is going to be given over to its captor because it is evil. America has become wicked in a most violent way. And so it does not stand a chance against this alliance that is rising up against it. So it makes sense, therefore, that it should under wraps clandestinely in a very covert way, try to keep its power by afflicting the citizens of the countries that have joined BRICS. Afflict Iranians, even though really, frankly, truly, there are some Iranians that don't stand. If, if anything, all of these uh, protests and riots in Iran against their government, the oppression evidences that 
A lot of Iranians feel like they've been born in the wrong country. Just as a lot of South Africans feel like they've been born in the wrong country. They're targeting civilians, just like Vladimir Putin. So you're a hypocrite, America. Just like uh, Vladimir Putin is busy killing Ukrainian civilians. He is not gunning for soldiers. He is not. Uh, he's, he's committing war crimes. America is now committing covert operation war crimes. Cold War operation war crimes. Against the citizens of countries that are at enmity with their nation. Or they're rising up in alliance that will be at enmity with their country. So got a whole big fat chunky bone to pick with that. And I can't stand them. Right. That's what's going on at the present moment. So Iran joining BRICS made me confirm even more so that. Oh God, did I really have to go and be birthed in this random silly nation? Did I have to go and live in South Africa? I don't stand with anything of this politically i'm always wincing when i watch the news i'm always cringing when i watch the news i don't like watching south african politics i am so against a lot of everything that's going on in this country that frankly i hide behind the news covered of other countries that i might not have to see what my own little backyard is doing i stand with nothing that is doing on top of that it loves witchcraft etc mm. And then I find out that now they want to bring Iran into this thing. While America dumbos, you are literally trying to enable that Iranian nuclear deal. For what reason, don't nobody know. Anyway, whatever. So these are dumbos are going to butt heads in the cosmos because none of them are trying to listen to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what's good. So I belong to a silly nation that frankly needs to be left. I would adore to live somewhere else in Africa where it's not so cantankerous and chaotic and like an African country that has nothing to do with bricks. I would absolutely love to move there. No interest in living in the West. Absolutely no interest at all in being in America or anywhere at all in Europe because it's only going to go downhill from there, especially for America. Europe will be safe for a while. Why? Because it is the revived Roman Empire where the Antichrist is going to rise up out of. So God is going to keep it largely safe up until the trip but America is about to burn, burn, burn. And what America, in its burning, in its falling state, in its decimation, that's what's good. It's going to bring down some BRICS nations. And one of them that are going to be mowed to the ground entirely flattened until there is nothing of it recognizable anymore is South Africa. So frankly, I got to get out of here. I got to be heli out of this place. Got to go because I don't even stand with its ideologies. And I understand why they need to be bombed because frankly, they went and allied against God with God's enemies. That's what's good. However, calling itself a Christian nation. However, calling itself a Christian nation nation the BRICS alliance of which is also busy shaking hands with the uae the uae of which is among the most persecuting in the entire single like national groups in the country against the body of christ i'm just like yes in and man, with your false gods, your foreign idols, your barterings and your interchanges South Africa with all the nations that hate God. And understand that as a small little country, in comparison to all of them, you're going to be the first one to be squished out the way. So, Lord Almighty, a tsunami is coming to my land. Please come helivac me before it engulfs them whole. I will survive alone with my life. And by alone, I mean me and the remnant in this country. And then all of y'all will be tsunamied. Because you're going to be laid waste by America on its downfall. But anyway, uh, since you don't want to listen to me, I will still continue to speak. So this information that I am presently presenting before you right now is being listened to by an entire coven in this country that is focused on its mission against people like me. And when they listen to me... Even though they don't like me very much, it's a facet of what I say. Uh, you know, agitate the living daylights out of them, given that they are patriotic. So they will go to war with America in a spiritual sense. So US of A, the seditious human individual over here, gawking out the insanity of the world at large, is about to start a, a war. Uh, literally, I'm like Helen of Troy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I am launching ships from the occult in this country to America because they have found out through my ministry that they are surveilling like no man's business, given that it's all like monitoring spirits and whatnot. They are going to take what I say seriously because they understand my spiritual gift is that poignant and I am that accurate. It, and they will not go this down. They're not going to take this lying down. So dominoes are about to be tipped on my behalf and I will survive, escape with my life, following which the Lord will then evacuate me, move me to some other place where it is safer for me to be at while bombs are landing in my backyard. While bombs are landing in a country I was born in, I will be helivacked. 
I will be taken out, but not before neutralizing or at least attempting to with all of their African sorcery, your strategy against them. They're going to try and block it. Spiritually, there is about to be a war between South Africa and America incited by yours truly. It is going to happen because they believe me. And the reason they believe me is because they've been, per what is this? They've been monitoring me for nine years. That is how my South Africa is intimidated by the spirit of the Lord, the way that they have so turned against God. Nine years, Yonke, they have been persecuting an innocent Christian woman because she is onto something so evil that they've done to the country. And in so far as she can die, they don't care. But then when you come up against the country and even the strategies that they have for the country, they're going to come up against you. They're going to come up against you. So here it is that now BRICS wants to join forces, inviting even with a little gold sealed envelope, Iran. Herein lies that particular issue. And this is all happening while America is listening to this. This is now what I heard from Tom Hughes' channel. He could not help but laugh, but, but at the same time, it's, it's like so. Laughing is, is a coping strategy, frankly, for Tom Hughes at this particular moment. Apparently, allegedly, one state in America, I think it is Michigan, or it could be Chicago, I stand corrected. I'm just hearing shh in that whole state. Mm, but I think it's Michigan. Yeah, that's what's good. They have given leeway for gangsters. They have literally concocted a law from their orifices where they tell gangsters to only start shooting all over the show like it's ping pong mm -hmm. yeah from the hours of 9 a.m to 9 p.m not 9 a.m to 9 p.m sorry but from 9 p.m to 9 a.m like literally hold your guns in a horse and then after that take them out from 9 p.m to 9 a.m when you stop making concessions for criminals to be criminals in the name of public safety you're done as a nation i spoke about that yesterday how it is that in sodom they came up with a, war, a law. The king of Sodom literally said, y'all can have a, an orgy in the public square. And it's, it's law. It's in canon. It's in statute. When a country starts to legalize strange stuff, it's over. So it is no wonder Candace Owens is out here interviewing Andrew Tate, the pimp. It is no wonder I am being massacred by some dude that was set free out of prison even though he was in there for attempted murder. It is no wonder the whole nation cannot fend itself off against its enemies to a point where now it is attacking innocent civilians in countries of their enemies. It is attacking civilians in countries of their political enemies. They are having, they are literally declaring a cyber war on South Africans. They're going to declare one on Indians. They're going to declare one on Brazilians. They're going to declare one on Iranians. They're going to declare one on Russians. They're going to declare one on Chinese, on, on, on the Chinese. They are going to declare one on Mexicans. I believe they also want to join BRICS. Wherever it is that people are trying to join BRICS, they are going to target individual citizens on the ground because America understands that if you want to get to the to a society, to a country, get to the fabric of society, get to the individual civilians on the ground. If you want to decimate a nation, destroy the teachers, destroy the doctors, destroy the police, destroy the kids, destroy that which is the future of the land or the working class of the land. If you can get to the working class, whatever the military tries to do, whatever the political structures try to do, they will be ineffective. So their strategy is to literally underhandedly just destroy civilians of countries so that their politicians, their leaders will not be strong, so that their militaries won't have mighty men, so that etc. I could go on. But they can't do this as a free country that is uh, under international laws. They can't do it in a way that is obvious and overt because then they're going to get shunned. They're going to get frowned upon. The United Nations might even like oust them from where it is that they are at. So they're going and they have, they are doing it under ramps covertly in a secret clandestine fashion, almost like in an underground bunker to destroy from within in with tactics or strategies that cannot be traced and a cyber attack, a social media affliction on content creators in these countries of their enemies is the first one online not never mind social media but just any online platform any online platform for business like amazon like etsy like guys i, I like basically any american platform that is enabling some kind of commerce e-commerce on the earth is about to be used is currently already being used as a weapon against the citizens the civilians of nations that are at enmity with them in order to weaken those alliances they are targeting economically those countries through civilians 
So your Etsy shop is all of a sudden not going to sell so well. Your Amazon book is all of a sudden not going to sell so much. Your PayPal monies that have been paid to you that you have earned in your account are not just not going to get there. You're not going to know if at all you have received a payment from PayPal if there was no notification. It's it's like you, you you're not going to inquire about money you never know you got. You're not going to inquire about a, a, a $500 payment in your PayPal if it never came in. They are going to do that. They are going to, they are currently presently already starting. Do you understand? And it's going to significantly chop up the finances of people, civilians, lay Joes and lay Janes whose political ideologies they don't even know. Like for instance, what it is that is the political mindset of America. Largely, I stand with it more even than South Africa. Yet despite standing for some of their ideologies, they are going to mow me down with the rest of South Africa because it's a necessary evil. These are collateral damages. And in order to rescue the country, something got to be done. It is a nefarious, like, bowling ball strategy. Knocking out all different kinds of pins. Even the innocent ones. That is what is currently going on. And because I'm communicating this, and I've been with veracity in the past, against the secret societies of my own country, they're going to believe me. And they're going to counteract this. They are going to counteract it spiritually and maybe even in some physical way that is also going to be covert and unseen. So there's going to be a cold war in the cosmos. And I will have been the one to launch these thousand ships. I told you, I'm like a Helen of Troy. I told you, this little rando in America is going to die because of a Helen of Troy activity. Where it is, or a, like phenomenon, where it is that one woman will have literally sh launched a thousand ships but in the cosmos, unseen war is about to happen and the collateral damage will be people who don't know Jesus, but the Lord will rescue with their lives those that he, that have stood in the gaps for their countries, that have stood with him and that have been overtly warning, sounding a siren on the rooftops. Ninjeli lezinja dogs. You can choose to believe me or not, but you know what? You're gonna believe me because I've been accurate so far. I've been accurate so far. They're not going to just take it sitting down. They're going to be caught in between a rock and a hard place. They could just sit back and do absolutely nothing. That's what's good. Because they want to disprove what I'm saying. Or they want to disregard the importance of the prophecies that I speak. But just Njefela sitting back as a whole country. While America makes like Pac-Man. And eats away at your talent. Eats away at your finances. Eats away at an economy that is already being gnawed away at. They're going to struggle to sit on that. They're going to struggle to sit on it. But the whole, whole lady nails underneath their buttocks but don't do that more who demand cactus do you understand until they uh, they spring into action whether or not they want to validate me whether or not they want to vindicate me it is too much of a risk to sit on this and do nothing and america you're going to be defeated because of stupid laws like those where your little gangsters are allowed to just shoot bullets at anybody and so far as it's between the hours of 9 p.m and 9 a.m you keep coming up with these laws you keep manufacturing this insanity you keep focusing on nothing but the the, the fact that you concentrate on black people and what it is that they have been experienced under in order to create laws as opposed to an entire country full of people of different races black people of which are a minority minority in your land and yet your laws are focused on black people a lot your laws are focused on gay people and lesbian people and making children transition to freaking girls when they were boys and vice versa you are focused on all the wrong things just exactly what african presidents keep saying when you try to shove down their throats the pill of let the gay community there thrive and the presidents are like, look, this is not, this is a non-issue. We got other things. There's like famine going on. There's like war, you know, like breaking out in random parts of the country. There's like religious hostilities. There are tribal groups clashing with one another. There is persecution. There's rape. Women are being ravaged. Like we've got problems. Like there's an issue with education, HIV, like Ebola. Come on, relax. And like it's a busy our law like literally built into canon statute that like a man should go and marry another man i'm sorry i gotta deal with the hiv crisis the same thing that african presidents keep telling america little busy trying to threaten uganda and what have you and the response of african presidents the response of ethiopia the response of uganda kenya the response of these countries has always been there's literally so there are so many things that we have got as problems we don't have time to be legislating legalities of things that we don't even stand with virtuously in our country these are not our values so laws on and then you intimidate and threaten the living dads out of them with financial aid humanitarian aid threatening to take it away from their shores threatening to starve the people threatening not to bring them hiv assistance threatening blah blah do you america your focus yeah the very same 
thing that African presidents have got right, America, and that Agnes Katimina Soguba woke. I don't have time to go woke. And there's too many other issues out here in these streets. America's just not doing that. They've got other very gargantuan issues. Literally, there is an attack on their currency. There is an attack on their sovereignty. There is an attack on their power as a country. And all they can do is try and focus on other people marrying same-sex couples across the world. They can't focus on what's important. They're busy legalizing things that don't matter right now, but they don't matter. Gay marriage at this point don't matter. It don't matter in comparison to the threat against your entire country. You are Sodom. You are busy legalizing orgies in the public square while there is fire and brimstone about to fall on your entire country. So, I mean, I mean, seriously, BRICS is going to win. All these countries that are literally trying to take over like Pinky and the Brain, the world, they're going to not prosper to take the world over, but they will definitely take America. They will take America. In their attempt, Pinky and the Brain will prosper to bring the pantyhose down of America, leaving her naked in the public square over a Michael Jackson star in Los Angeles. And be like, uh, I guess you still have Beyonce. <laughs> I guess you still have the entertainment industry trying to convince the whole world that the immorality is okay. I guess you still have Sam Smith with his whole unholy performance at the Grammys. A whole entire ritual over the world. You still got that, eh? People still love to dance to your music. You know how in my exercise I often da dance to a lot of American music? Yeah, at least you still got that. You got like culture that you've exported to the world that frankly people need to be sanctified from. Uh, so keep your Beyonce. But guess what? I'm going to burst a crater in the center of your nation. And the reason why I'm going to prosper is because of the fact that you keep legalizing random rubbish. You keep on telling gangsters, guys, you know what? I mean, what you're doing is really not nice. It would be great if you did a better thing. Um, how about you rather, you know, at least minimize what you're doing by shooting everybody from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. It would be great for you to just kind of hold your bullets and your guns until 9 p.m. So America is literally hooking up purge laws all across the states. Purge laws. Crime is legal, according to the state of Michigan, from 9 p.m. up until 9 a.m. So I'm thinking school kids that go to school, what, what time does school start in America? I know that in South Africa, 8 a.m. we had to be in class. So if at all, you can keep on shooting and shooting as a gangster. Up from till 9, that's the time that people arrive in the office. They start their jobs in the office at 9. They start their schooling day at 8. So from 8 to 9, from the, in the morning, they, they're in traffic at 6 a.m. They are waking up at 5.30 and you're still shooting all over the show. So how about we just shoot kids on the way to school? So kids have got to run to school away like a whole bulletproof suit on the way to school because crime is legal up until they sit down and their lesson starts. Then only are the guns supposed to stop. So I guess then if you're going to say that uh, only shoot from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., you should then maybe start your school days at 10, eh? Or maybe at 11 or 12 because you still have to prepare and get ready, brush your teeth, eat breakfast and stuff like that. So start your days at 12 and hook up a curfew, a national curfew, or at least a state curfew since it's a Michigan law. Yeah, hook up, hook up a curfew from the hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Since you have, the, from the hours of 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., since we have given criminals permission to shoot each other dead and anything else at all that is on the street from those hours that's america sodomic purge laws and you are expecting that you're gonna have some kind of competitive advantage over smaller nations africa has a thing about witchcraft it's beastly that way and they can bewitch even the the dog off my head right now their witchcraft is tactless and they don't care where they throw it at even when it is um defeatist so no one understand that if at all you're gonna come at them clandestinely like a little worm squeezing yourself underneath a door they're going to squeeze themselves underneath your door too they're also not going to wield actual weapons they're not going to take out actual guns you might attack us with social media you might attack us with your platforms your paypal you might attack us with your amazon you might attack us with all of these azel what is this um no no azeli is not uh, available here in south africa but what, what is it like all of these um etsy amazon all of these platforms that started out in america and then have been branched out to the entire planet you can attack us with those because we have started to need them we have started to develop a reliance on those alliances, those business alliances with our countries. You can attack using that without us seeing it. But Africans are going to come at you with a flying Africa on your face and they will win because you're busy legalizing crime like it's the purge. That's your country. It's going to fall because it lacks righteousness. It does not have basic things down and Africa will win because Africa gets stuff like this. 
that I ain't got no time to be legalizing gay marriage because there is an HIV pandemic in the country, because there is an education issue in the country, because there is a hunger issue in the country. So I literally do not have time to be legislating as the president of Uganda, you idiots. Some dude to go and marry some other dude. I'm not going to go and immoralize my country further. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to allow my children in my country to go and transition to becoming girls when they were born boys and then confuse the country even further when we are struggling with random diseases that start on our shores because of a lack of resources and proper clean running water. I'm dealing with cholera. I don't have time to be woke. I don't have time for your funny little uh, umbrella agenda. I don't care. I gotta focus on all the other social, political and socio-economic issues of my land. America doesn't get that basic principle and so for those reasons they are gonna fall. They're gonna fall because all you're looking at is pleasing or titivating the taste buds of some entitled community of insanely heinous acronymic gangsters. Like a whole, a whole alphabet mafia is running the country and black people and their sorrow about apartheid or what was this like systematic oppression that happened 20,000 years ago. Um, you're hurting me and black lives matter! Yeah, you're busy trying to soothe the wounds of one minority population in your country alongside another minority. And you're like, two minority groups are running your country. Black people and the LGBTQIA plus 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 PQRSTUVWXYZ hashtag squiggly sign dollar sign like exclamation mark and dash underscore community. You're focused on those two communities and them only and what they want at the expense of important matters because you're spoiled brats. You have been had your bread buttered on both sides for so long, had your cake and ate it too for so long, you have been blessed for so long with so much comfort that you can literally afford to focus on rubbish while other countries are are trying to stand in Jefela. Stand. But never mind you standing. You, you've, you're you not only standing, but you're like elevated on a staircase at the very top. Other countries are just starting to stand. They're starting to walk after years of physiotherapy following being disabled. And so, of course, when you're pinnacled in all that cushion comfort at the, in the, at the pink of health, you're going to focus on nothing but the wiles of black people who are entirely too entitled and frankly, it's not even that bad against you, so shut up, and gay people. That's all you're focusing on. So Ligowa, and you're busy telling gangsters, come one, come all, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. You're busy telling people, go and grab a bag or two at Gucci, and ain't nobody going to give you grief even though you don't pay for it. That's what under heaven it is that's going on in America. It is a circus. People like Sia are swinging on the chandelier, on the chandelier. Whoa, you don't stand a chance against countries that have got discipline. And you literally don't. That is why China is going to overwhelm you. That is why Russia is going to overwhelm you. And that is why African countries that are not quite that far gone are also going to overwhelm you. So when I say this little buffoon in America that is busy trying to kill me right now is about to be knocked out like a domino. He's going to be among the first pe people to be taken out the way. He's about to die and I will gain reprieve. And then America is going to get handled until they stop the rubbish they are doing because they're going to realize that it's not worthy. It's not worth it to fight. It's not a battle that is worthwhile to pick. Now that they've been busted for this thing that they're doing, they cannot afford to have this, these many hostilities against them coming from all different kinds of parts of Africa. So you're going to give me my YouTube channel back. America, you're going to do it. You're literally going to unshadow ban the crap out of me. You are going to give me my fitness. You are going to give me my, my uh, ministry. You are going to let me grow. You're going to give me back my subscribers. And I will then only be dealing with witches that I have to handle. I will only be dealing with prayer. You're going to leave me alone. Because South Africans are also feeling embarrassed by the fact that you're helping them look like super creeps. You're helping them look like they're so full of witchcraft that for the life of them, they can't help but make a woman live in a haunted mansion for the rest of her days. If at all it was just witchcraft in Africa operating, I'm my life would not be this bad. But America has gone on right ahead to literally silence a woman based on its covert tactical, very unconstitutional fight, very war criminally fight against the civilians of countries that are at enmity with them or that are threatening their power. So this little animal in America is going to die. I had a dream about him chasing me like a, a diamond that kept on escaping him in a, a sewer, like a sewage pipe, drained pipe. Because he imagines that he's a man that's been thrown away by America and I'm a woman that's been thrown away by South Africa. So we, we, make, we, 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 we make sense together. He thinks that since I've been spat out by my country and he's been spat out by his, there's no other better pairing. There's no other better couple to come together. Except I'm an innocent woman while he's a guilty man that's been set free and he was not supposed to get out of prison. He got out of prison because his country keeps on releasing criminals. That's what's good. I also am a victim of witches while he is the perpetrator of everybody as a witch. We are literally on uh, diametrically opposed in our standing in this lowliness that we are in. 
So if I'm in a drain or a sewer, having been cast out, it is because I'm a diamond in the rough, in the rough that has been irresponsibly mistreated by her country. He, however, is there because he put himself there out of being irresponsible, but he thinks that him and I are peas in a pod. He probably thinks we're the exact same thing, so he keeps on pursuing me. He keeps on trying to pick me up. He keeps on bewitching the living daylights out of me so I can come into his life because he thinks that him and I are the exact same thing when we are not. I am a victim. He's a perpetrator. But because we're in the same place, he imagines that he's going to get me one day. It's stuff like that that's going to irritate the living daylights out of Africa, America. It's the fact that your little entitled fallen souls are literally trying to grab some of the rarest, most beautiful gems in Africa because they just so happen to have been born on a continent that does not see their value because they're going through so many other rubbish things, because they so love witchcraft, because so many other things have fallen apart, but now you're trying to literally scratch your groovy fingernails, putting their DNA in it. African girls and African men, you are trying to salvage them. You are trying to, like slave labor, slave labor, get them because nobody else sees their value. You are trying to opportunistically grab that which is of extreme value because it lives in an environment that has forgotten itself, an environment that has peed on itself, that has defecated in its own pants, an environment that does not see a gem when it's walking around in its grill because it has got so many social political issues. It is always at war. There is always a striving. It's like war cr cr it's like war criminals who rape women because the country went to war. And so there's nobody that these women that, that, that is protecting these women. All the men are in war or they're dead. And the police stations are all closed. There is no justice for them. So women are just being ravished. It is actually the reason why war was this rape has been declared a crime against humanity. Because oftentimes in war, at war, men of both camps so of the country and of the opposite camps have just given themselves women in Jefela. They've just raped them, raped them, raped them because nobody is coming for them during a war. Your little war criminal in America is trying to ravage my body because no one is coming for me. That's what America is doing. They are taking for granted the sorrow of Africa, the unadvanced mindset of Africa sometimes. How it is that because they are all in so much lack and want, they just want to eat, 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 grunt, 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 thinking very primitively without thinking about the bigger picture. They're just throwing everything apart. And so Americans are like, I'm going to pick it up. Like a, a whatever, something that's been thrown away in the, in the sewers, even though it's got it's of a high value. I had a dream of your little animal literally chasing me around in a sewer, a drainage pipe, looking like something that has been flushed, but of great value. And he imagined that since he in and of himself has been flushed by America, and he just so far happened to have found himself there as fecal matter. He's going to go and pick up a diamond in that environment. But it kept escaping him. It kept disappearing out of his hands because I was misplaced. I am misplaced by the degeneracy moral one at that of my country. But you don't get to just grab me and run with me. But you see, South Africans, as evil as they are and as naive as they are and as defeatist as they are, they are patriotic. So what I am saying right now is going to annoy the living daylights out of them until they forget about me for five minutes and focus on what you're doing and then they'll come back to me. So I'm going to gain reprieve. Why? Because you're about to butt heads, wicked people. My wicked country is about to butt heads with wicked America and the rest of the BRICS nations whose who citizens, civilians, you are targeting. They're going to butt heads with you. And the very thing that you're doing to try and keep your power is going to cause you to fall, crash, and burn America. And the reason why you will crash and burn is because you're so immoral that you can't repent. You can't do better. You're just not going to stay your hand from continuing with your insanity. So for those reasons, you will keep on focusing on all the wrong things while your enemies now charge you because they realize that you are taking for granted the war torn and famine ravaged state of Africa. So I'm about to get rescued only because my enemies are about to go to war with each other. The wicked are about to butt heads and kill each other in battle. And I will then on that day come out from the hole and the cocoon that I've been hidden in and I will be safe. I'm going to get everything I asked for in prayer. I am going to get my ministry. You are going to give me my YouTube channel back. America. YouTube. You are going to give me back my my fitness. Facebook. You're going to give it all back to me. Your little uh, strategy. This thing that you started. This experiment. Is going to fail so abysmally. This hypothesis that you're testing. Is going to be so unfruitful. That you are going to give Africans back everything you took from them. Because it's not going to be worth it. To have declared this cold war. Because they're going to start to notice it. Why? Because people like me will notice it. Content creators and everybody else is going to notice the emptiness of their PayPal. How it is that they're not anymore getting the same revenue streams from PayPal that they used to. Where did all that money go? Their clients paid them, but it looks like they didn't. People bought goods, but it looks like they didn't. Things are bouncing back, literally. Payments being made online, on Etsy, and then they just bounce back until the, the, the purchaser gives up. But this is being done, and so therefore the, the seller does not then get that sale. And this is something, and then so therefore because of that, there is no rev revenue coming in. But it's actually sabotage done against certain accounts. 
belonging to IP addresses in certain countries as a cyber war. It is a cyber war that is being declared and it is going to be covert and unseen and clandestine. And so for those reasons, America is going to expect that nobody's going to notice that there's been a financial cyber war waged on BRICS countries. I don't allege to BRICS, not even in the slightest. I don't like that pairing of nations at all, at all. But I just so happen to be born in one of the countries that are in this alliance. And now I'm by collateral damage, literally being mown to the ground by America. But I'm going to expose them because my, not, never mind my livelihood, but my life is in danger. And so therefore I'm literally charging South Africa against you and not just South Africa. It's going to be Africa because you're not only targeting South Africa, you're targeting anyone at all that is interested in BRICS and that is way more than just us. So all the best America with your little COVID unconstitutional war criminally thing that you're doing. You're going to stop it because you can't afford for people to bust you. And I've been saying that you're going to stop it. And when you do, I'm going to monetize. When you do, I am going to finally get my apartment and your little funny, little weird, little dodgy, strange, odd thing like wreaking havoc, like bleeding out in America over there is going to die. That little vampire that's trying to exsanguinate blood out of my bones is going to die. Your little criminal from California is going to die because he's going to get, he's going to be the first one to be mowed to the ground by the death curses of South Africans over Americans you must understand they are going to mow you down but first this guy is going to go out first and then when he is at the end of himself I'm then going to be like <sighs> be the last one to drop him to the ground Uzo Shona, he is dying do you understand and he is going to die trying to salvage something that he thinks looks exactly like him we're not the same thing bugaboo I am a victim of people like you you are a perpetrator we're not the same thing we might be in the same sewer we might be in the same dustbin we might have been spat out by our countries but i am spat out as a victim of war criminals you are spat out as one who so decimated your own life that your country wants nothing to do with you we're not the same thing so you're gonna die and you're going to die because my people are going to come up against you in the name of their idol gods in rescuing me. The wicked will be sent to war on behalf of the righteous. When the righteous are outnumbered, when the righteous are beleaguered and they don't have uh, basically all the support around them that they need. If they don't have the uh, arsenal that they need, if they don't have the weapons that they need, if they're so outnumbered, given that the road is narrow, that at least a life that few, they'd be that fine. The Lord will then charge the wicked to fight each other so that they will knock each other out, leaving no one but the righteous. All the best with your evil war. It's coming. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cranky. Bye.